Hi guys, so I have just a little mini update. I was waiting to make this, hoping that I would get some answers to two things that were that were raised, two new pieces of information, but I haven't gotten any sort of response back yet, which is scary because I didn't think that my Korean mom and her brother would be scared away that fast once we started talking about the real issues, once we got over the excitement of finding each other and started getting into the nitty gritty of all of the questions that I wanted answered. So one of my last emails to my uncle, I had asked, you know, general questions like how long have you been in the US? What do you do? And, you know, which I had already talked about in my first video, I had also asked him if if he had known me growing up, which he had responded to saying, yes, for the seven about seven months that you were with your grandparents, I was there as well with you. But the second part of that answer that I didn't address in the other video because I was waiting for an explanation about, which I haven't gotten yet, was it was about seven months with my grandparents until my father took me away, which was not something that I was expecting at all. I didn't know that he had any sort of role other than being the other half of my DNA. From my file, all I could see was, you know, the, the very general overview of how my Korean mother and father met, which is that they worked together. He was, it just says government official, so I don't know what that is. I don't know where it was, um, but, but she worked in the same office. It was actually kind of funny because my file just says that my mother and father got to know each other at work and they had a lot of meetings together and therefore that is how the child was conceived. I knew that he wouldn't really have that big of a role because he already married and he already had another daughter or a daughter. So obviously because of that situation with him already being married, he wouldn't have been able to be a father to me in the traditional Korean sense of the term. And apparently when she found out she was pregnant, she left work, quit her job, moved I think to another city, and nobody knew what had happened. He apparently didn't know that she had gotten pregnant. And it wasn't until my grandparents found out about me that I guess, I don't know who did, but somehow they contacted him and he was part of the, the jury that was saying, you know, it's probably a better idea for you to give her up for adoption and have another family raise her because you won't be able to give her what she needs which at the time would have been pretty true. Being a single mom in Korea in the 80s, early 90s, is not an easy thing and it's still not an easy thing. So from, from my files, that was the only part in my life that I thought that man had had, which was contributing DNA and then just agreeing that I shouldn't stay with her. So to find out that there was at least a little bit of time that I spent with him too, it is crazy. I read that and I did not know what to think at all. I don't know how long I was there. I don't know if it was an agreed upon thing, if he just came out of the blue and just took me away. I don't, I don't know any of that. I don't remember any of it. My childhood brain just shut all of that off so that I wouldn't remember and so far the only two people that I have contact with who would be able to give those answers to me are not responding they're not telling me what happened or how it happened they're just you know in the in the next email my uncle just 
dances around the question and he doesn't answer it and I haven't heard anything from her at all. So I don't know yet what happened. It's just the more that I that I hear, it's just the crazier it sounds what my life was in those very, very short years that I was in Korea. And then another thing that I had written to my uncle was just asking, verifying that my Korean mom was taking care of herself because I know that this is a really difficult, really strange thing for a, a long lost child to just come out of the woodwork and start asking all these questions. And he replied back to me that she was still very much in shock, which I understand. And part of the reason why she was so in shock was because she didn't know until the agency contacted her on my behalf last year that I was adopted to the US at all. So I don't know if that means there was some sort of agreement or reassurance from the orphanage that I was going to remain in the country or if that's just what they told people is, oh, no, 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 don't worry about it. You know, a good Korean family is going to take care of her. I don't know the nature of that. I just know that she didn't know really anything at all. And I understand with adoption, there's only so much information that will be shared with the parents who have given up the child, but it just seems so strange that she was so shocked that I had grown up in the US this whole time. It seems like there's a lot of miscommunication and probably a lot of misinformation, probably a little bit of dishonesty as well going on. On top of being a single mom, having to quit her job, not having any sort of family support system because of how conservative society is, not having a father to your child who can help raise your kid because he's already married with a kid, not even knowing the truth of what's going to happen to your kid when you have to give them up. I can understand why I haven't heard anything from her in a few days. I've been aware, but I haven't really realized. I haven't really sat down and thought about just how big this is for her and how hard it must be and how painful it must be to relive all of those things all over again. It's hard because I've waited my entire life to have this contact and this connection again and over the course of a weekend I had it and then it just went away and, and I mean it's it's not like it it's totally going away like no one is ever going to speak to me again but it was just so exciting and it was such a cool thing because I was getting so much interaction in such a short amount of time and then I started asking these questions and then it's just been nothing. It's really frustrating and it's really discouraging but there's nothing I can do. I just have to be patient and understand that this is a lot to ask to have them relive things from 25 years ago that were not all good memories. I'm fortunate in a way that I don't have them, but I just want to know what my life was. And I'm just at the mercy of people being willing to tell me those things. So nothing really to report, no updates, just those two bombshells that I don't have answers to right now. I'm obsessively checking my email all the time and I should probably stop doing that because it's just giving me anxiety that I'm not hearing anything. It's just something that I have to wait for and I knew this would be a really strange process and a growing process but I kind of forgot it's not just for me, it's for her too. The, the amount of time that it takes me to come to terms with the things that are coming out is not the only amount of time that I have to think about. I have to be aware of how long it will take her to be comfortable and to be able to face those things all over again from 25 years ago. So just more patience, which is not something that I'm good at exhibiting, but this will be a good practice, I guess, for it. I'm sure over the next 
months or years of getting to know her, there's going to be a couple more stumbling blocks like this too. So that's it for now. Um, I will update you when I get updates. Bye.